Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Swift Creek Customs, and today I wanted to share with you how you can create a knockout design in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio Pro version. There are new features that were released in the Pro version. There is more information in the description below on exactly what the Pro version is, and I will also link to a tutorial that I did before the Pro was available where Subtract, it's called something different, but where that was available in the software. So there is a way you can do it on the basic. It's a little bit different, but I'm gonna show you how you can easily do this in the Leonardo Design Studio Pro version. The first thing I'm gonna do uh, is start with opening up some files. So I'm going to come over here to File, Open, and I'm going to open a PNG file that is a background. This is like a brush stroke background. So I'm going to walk through a few things here on how to open these files. I first choose the 300 DPI. It doesn't actually make a difference because I'm not actually going to be doing a print and cut. DPI is for your print settings, but I still get in the habit of selecting the 300 DPI for quality. And then I'm going to come over here to next. And then on this screen, I'm going to choose next as well. And on this screen, I wanna point out a couple of things. Typically, I don't have any issues when I'm tracing and I just continue through all the menus. However, you're going to notice here on this PNG file that there are sections here that are not included in the trace. The blue lines around the trace do not get these outside edges or these interior little bits if you want this distressed look. So what I'm going to do, include holes is checked, so it should, but now I need to come up and I need to adjust the minimum contour area. And this is just going to depend based on the photo, every single photo or every single PNG, a PNG is a photo file, it's going to depend on every single design. They're not all created equal, they're not all the same. So you may need to adjust different things. So my first reaction was to increase this and that didn't work. So I decreased it and look, ta-da! those holes showed up. Now there's a couple little bits here that did not trace, and that is okay because in this image, you're going to have to weed out those little bits anyhow. Those are going to cut if you want them to. It did pick up these outer edges. So if you are seeing this, test it. Open it different ways with your software. I'm going to choose Next, and then I'm going to choose Finished. Currently, the only way to open a PNG or JPEG file up in the software is to first start as a print and cut. If you start as a background, it does not trace around the object. So you can see I have my print and cut registration marks around that. In the software of, I believe it started in 1.1.8, you can now turn that off and it is simply a cut file. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to increase the size of this and I wanna show you something real quick. So since it started as a print and cut image, if I come over here to the send design tab and I send it, you're going to see two different objects. This is your print and cut data. You can ignore that if you're simply doing a cut. This is going to be your cut file. You could use either one of these, they should cut, but you can ignore one of them. You do not need to cut both. Remember, Leonardo reads things and places them out on different mats based on color. So I'm going to use it as is. I don't need to ungroup this for what I'm doing. It will work. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to bring in my text file. Now, I could have simply typed out my text, but it takes me forever to decide on a font style. I like this font, I've used it before, so I wanted to bring in this design. Now this is a design from the Silhouette Design Store. I purchased the SVG file, downloaded it to my computer, and I'm opening it. There's a link in the description below on how you can use the Silhouette Design Store files with the Caesar software. I'm going to choose Cut Only, and I'm going to choose Next. It sees red as the cut line, that's fine. I'm going to click Apply. Now I can come in here and I can increase this. Since it is a cut only, the design was not filled. You can see down here, let me shrink this one. You can see here that it is currently set as a stroke because it's the cut line. I can choose fill color, then it's going to fill it in. I'm just going to change that color so we can see it here on the screen. 
And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. Check out those mouse hints in the bottom right corner. They are awesome for learning the software. So if I were to move my mouse around a certain point here, you can see over this little um, selection uh, bounding box, it tells me exactly what I can do when I have that object selected. That's just an extra tip. So I have this here and I want to cut it out of the background. Now you can do this two ways. You can use an offset, which is what I prefer because then I can line it up a little bit easier and I'm making it appear um, that there is a gap between the design in the background and the text. It can help with lining things up, but you can simply choose not to do the offset steps that I'm going to do next and skip to the subtract part. So in this case, I am actually going to place this design a bit off center. This is my sneak way of not having to line up the design on my shirt exactly straight. So I am simply going to rotate this just a little bit. So it gives me a little bit of a play in that I don't have to have it perfectly straight on my shirt. That's just my tip for me because I have issues with lining things up perfectly straight. With your text selected, come down here to your build contours. I'm going to click that and then I wanna choose editable contour cut only. Now you can see the black that's inside the letters. I also wanna check the include holes so that it gets inside the holes. And then I'm going to increase this and I wanna kind of exaggerate this on the screen so you can see this easier. I'm going to leave it as a black and I'm going to exaggerate that. So I'm going to then click apply and you can see I have a black outline around my text. Right now I'm gonna move my green text off and you can see that I have my black outline on top of my background. I'm going to left click and drag across both of those and then I can come down here to the remove front is what it's called in 1.1.9. It was called punch out and front in previous software so just be aware that the names are changing just a little bit as they're trying to find that specific term that they can use. Something you may not know here is that people ask, why is it not called the same thing in every single software? Well, there's times when things, not just terminology, but tools in the software or even tools with your machine are trademarked or patented. So they have to be careful what something else is called. They can't name everything the same as somebody else's program. Sometimes it works, sometimes other companies are more protective of even terminology. So keep that in mind. It's not for them to confuse you. It's a way to make it something different. And sometimes they have to do that. So that's a little behind the scenes knowledge. So with both of those selected, if they're not selected, so let me point this out here. If nothing is selected, these icons down here in the toolbar are grayed out. You cannot select them because there's nothing to apply it to. So if I left click and drag across both my offset and my background, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose remove front or punch out, or maybe it'll be subtract in the future. Again, refer back to what I just said. So remove front is going to cut that out of the background. Now I can simply move this over here and I can place it where I want. If I'm gonna be cutting this out of heat transfer vinyl, which I am, I'm going to be cutting it out of the backside anyhow, and I will cut it out of two different colors of vinyl, so it will go in two separate rounds. So I'm going to click over here to the send tab so you can see how this looks. Select, and then because I had inspire selected, let's go back, click off of it, click send, send design. Now you can see that I have the three different pieces. So I have one section here, again, PNG file, opened as a print and cut, so it shows as two. Select one to cut this background. And for HTV, I would choose this mirror option. It's going to mirror it for us. And then the inspire is the second color that I'm going to cut. And we'll take a look at how it does with the Caesar cutting machine and show you the final result with the pressing here. 
So I first cut out the purple color for the background and then I sent the white lettering to cut. Then I weeded everything out. Test cut, test cut, test cut. That helps with your weeding and making sure that your cuts are going to be clean. And then I pressed this. So I pressed the first layer for a couple seconds and then I pressed the second layer for the full amount of time. I did end up cutting the design, the words apart just a bit, just because HTV shrinks and I found it was easier to line it up after if I cut those letters apart. So here is the finished shirt that I created. So I hope those tips have helped give you a look into how you can open a PNG file and trace it the way you want it to trace or to adjust the settings as needed how to open an SVG file, links in the description below on how exactly I did that from the Silhouette Design Store, and how to easily create a knockout, subtracting your front image from your back image in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Find me on the Creating with Caesar Facebook group. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications for future content. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.